This is Jelly Bean, and if you have one of these, you know that they talk. <laughs> and eventually, the voice box can run out of juice when the batteries die. So I thought we would see if we can access it. One way you can is by taking the head off. And you can see here, never mind this, this was a temporary tattoo um, that I put on there. It is not coming off though, so I wouldn't suggest doing that. Uh, I have removed the head. Uh, there's a zip tie that goes around, and then I just put this elastic through. But as I recall, it was a bit tricky to get the head off uh, because the plastic was kind of bonded um, and I had to use a knife, like an X-Acto knife, which I didn't really like doing. This other style of Yoda doll, the heads come off a lot more easily. So what we're going to do here is, sorry, Jelly Bean, I know, this is not very dignified. I'm going to attempt to cut into this seam here. As you can see here, hopefully, I carefully snipped one of the stitches. Do not cut into the fabric. My intention is to carefully pull this apart while leaving the tail of the thread intact. So in other words, I'm not going to use um, a stitch ripper to rip through here. I'm going to just do one snip and then kind of try to pull the thread loose. I have begun pulling out the thread very carefully. I'm just using a mechanical pencil with the lead retracted and I'm just going in there and kind of trying to film with one hand so I probably can't do this with my left hand. Um, yeah, so you just get in there and gently work each loop out. And uh, then I'm going to do the same thing going downward a little bit. I have some thread tails. And the reason I cut my stitch in the middle and then worked up and down is so I will have these two thread tails. One thing I did notice as I pulled out the loops is that you it looks like it's a double thread here, but it actually goes across and back. So you might have to pull the two loops separately, even though it looks like they're so close together. Well, this is interesting and I wish I had filmed it, but I noticed as I was working with the one thread that there was another thread that was still connected going all the way down. And I don't know what that's about, but I actually just snipped that one in half. And now I can use that to tie off the other thread tail. And so I'm going to do that. And down here as well. You can't really see here, but I have knotted down here and up here. And do make sure that the opening is big enough. I didn't really think of that, that you can get in there to try to get the voice box out. As it turns out, you actually need to make the opening bigger because I could not maneuver my hand in. So I just continued opening it up a little bit higher. You can see uh, I took some stuffing out. There is a plastic kind of skeletal structure inside. The thing is, I have opened this doll up before. I'm not sure where the voice box was located originally. It is wired, but it may have floated around a bit. Um, I am able to get it out. I'm, I just can't tell you exactly where it would be. I think it's in the front. And so just or kind of get your hand in and go around that plastic in the center. Okay, I managed to get it out. If you have a large hand, <laughs> I don't know if you're gonna be able to do it. Um, try to find a small child or a 
little chimpanzee or something to do it for you. And here is the voice box. Looks like we have to take the screw out. Just using a little Phillips head screwdriver. Be very careful when you're doing this. The screw came out and it almost fell inside the doll. It is so close. That would have been really bad. So do not let that happen. And it looks like you just slide this down. It was kind of hard to get it going, but I don't know. Then it slid off pretty easily. And there are three button batteries. All right, you may not be able to see, but it is an LR44 battery, and there are three of them. I have fingernails, so I was able to get it out easily. You might need a little flat screwdriver or something. All right, then you could replace the batteries, and then you just slide this in. You can see there's some tabs. It's very straightforward. Of course, before you put this back in and sew it up, make sure it works. <laughs> Good. When you put it back in, you can see here's the speaker. You probably would want that facing forward in the front of the doll, but I wonder if I could just put it in the back so next time it's easier to get it out. Let's see. All right, I've put the speaker in the back of the doll. I don't know. I think it's fine. I'm just gonna leave the voice box in the back. I'm gonna put the stuffing back in where it needs to go. I'm going to tie my thread tails up here and I'm gonna do a ladder stitch, I guess, here. If you don't know what that is, you can look it up or you could just do really any kind of stitching you want. It's on the back. No one's gonna see it. Just make sure you don't like sew into any of the wires or anything like that. If you ended up with only one green thread somehow, when you start off your new thread, you can always just tie that green thread to your new thread to anchor it and secure it. I'm about halfway through my ladder stitch, just in case you don't know what one is. It kind of looks like this, and then you're going to pull it tight at the end. That's the completed ladder stitch. It's a little bit messy. I'm not the greatest or most patient sewer. And you can see that these tails kind of popped out. That's okay. You can bury your threads. You can look that up if you don't know. Basically, you just put your needle on again and then go through and bury that thread inside the doll. Very simple to do, or you can just leave them hanging out. It's in the back. You could trim them a bit. So you can see here, I am burying this thread. I took it down and across, brought it out here, and now I'm gonna snip it, and you will not see that tail. All done. It sounds great. And that opening in the back could be useful too if you wanted to put, I don't know, potpourri or something. I was kind of toying with that idea. I don't know what else you can put in there. You could store your valuables inside or anything you want. The punchline to the video is that I forgot to put the screw back on. Hilarious. Fortunately, I have made the head easily removable, so let's look at that method. Because I've already replaced the zip tie with elastic, I really just have to undo my knot and the head will come off. One thing about this type of doll is that the head does not come off completely because it does have that structure. Um, so you will have to reach in there and you can get past the head to get in there and find the voice box. Probably I would think if your hand is small enough, there's the voice box. And now I can 
put the screw back in. All done again. I know, Jelly Bean. <laughs> More indignities. But I, it just occurred to me that you could probably also do it with the side seam. And that might be a little bit closer to the front of the doll to reach and get the voice box. But like I said, I'm not sure exactly where it was originally. But you can feel around and try to figure out where it is. And then maybe use that back seam or maybe try a different seam.